Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm here to show you how I quickly and easily created a set of four watercolor cards using the Arteza Real Brush Pens. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. You may already know that I am celebrating Arteza week here on my YouTube channel. I was sent some products by Arteza to try out and I'm spending the week sharing creations using the products that I got. In yesterday's video, I used their DIY canvas pad and created this fun embossed resist canvas piece. If you want to check this out, I will have the video as well as my Arteza week playlist linked in the description box below. And don't forget that I'm also celebrating my 13,000 subscriber with a giveaway that I will be announcing this Sunday, September 13th. And I'm going to give away some Arteza goodies to you. For today's project, I'm going to be using my Arteza Real Brush Pens to create a set of four cards that also include some stamping and gold embossing. Once I start the process, I will add some more products and I'll be sure to let you know when I introduce those. But if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I will be using Strathmore Bristol Smooth to do my water coloring on today. I'm gonna cut down one piece into four pieces that are five and a quarter inches tall by four and a half inches wide. Now these pieces will only end up being four and a quarter inches wide, but I wanted a little extra room on the sides in case when I did the coloring, I had to cut some off. I did pre-select the colors that I would be using today. I used teal A138, eggplant purple, a136, Rouge Pink, A190, and Sapphire Blue, A131. I am protecting my work surface today with a clear cutting board from the Dollar Tree. I pulled out one of my clear stamp blocks to use as a palette, and I have a piece of paper towel to the right just so later when I need to wipe my palette off. To get started, I am coloring a little of the purple onto that clear stamp block. Then I bring in the water brush, which I got with the pens, and I pick up some of that color with my water brush. Then I just take that to my paper, and I color probably about a one and a half inch tall section all the way across the card front. When I do need more color, I just bring back in that real brush pen to my stamp block and add some more there to pick up. You'll notice I do have a variation in the color as I go across the card front. I do want it to look like it is watercolored and not just a solid color. So this worked really well. While I finish this part, I did want to tell you about some special links in the description box below. First off, I have shopping links to the US and EU Arteza shops. So if you want to check out any of their products, I hope you'll click on those. These are affiliate links, so I will receive a small commission if you place an order, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. Also in the description box is a discount code for you. If you use it between now and September 22nd, you can save 10% on your order. If that does get extended past the 22nd, I will be sure to let you know. You'll see there that once I was done with the purple piece, I put that to the side to dry, and then I'm doing the same thing, but this time using the blue pen that I selected. Doing the same thing, picking the color up from the palette, and just coloring across the front of this piece. I continue this same process, so I end up with four card fronts. Mm -hmm. 
Once all of those were dry, I brought in my trimmer and cut each of these down to four and a quarter inches wide. Like I mentioned before, I cut these a little bit wider in case when I did the watercoloring, it ruined the edges. But honestly, that was probably a step I could have skipped because these ended up looking just great and I wouldn't have necessarily needed to cut off any of the edges. Once those were trimmed down to size, I brought in my Creative Memories Decorative Wavy Trimmer. If you watched my Inspired Saturdays video recently, you will have seen this. But what I'm going to do is cut a wave into the bottom of each one of these pieces. I tried to center the wave in the colored area there, and I just do the same thing on all four. Later, I'm going to have just a little bit of gold foil paper peek through this opening. For the sentiments on my card today, I'm going to be using Pretty Pink Posh's Thoughtful Greeting Stamp Set. Because these are clear stamps and they need some extra cushion on the bottom, I did pull in my Sizzix Stamper Secret Weapon Pad as well as a clear stamp block. I will be stamping these in Versamark and embossing them in Detail Gold Embossing Powder. Before I stamp my sentiment, I'm going to pull in my embossing buddy and go over the area where I'll be stamping the sentiment. This ensures that the embossing powder will stick only to the ink. The first sentiment I chose reads, I appreciate you more than words can say. I ink that up really well, and then I stamp it to the ward the right of my card, kind of where the wave goes lower. Once I have that stamped, I pull in my tidy tray, and I dump my gold powder over that. Once that has powder on it, I bring in my heat tool and I heat set that embossing powder. I do heat from the front and back to help prevent a little bit of the warping. Now it was time to work on the next card. I did choose a new sentiment. This stamp reads, thank you for everything you do. The rest of the process is the same as the first. I prepare my surface with my embossing buddy, ink up my stamp, and get that stamped and embossed. I continue this same process until I have a sentiment on all four card fronts. Once those were all done, I need to do a little bit more stamping. I brought in this Stamps by Judith Dots Peg stamp. I just want to add some gold accents around the front of the card. On some of these, I will have the dots go across that opening, so I push my two card pieces together, prepared the areas where I thought I would stamp at with my embossing buddy, and then I stamped the dot stamp three times, just scattered around the card front, kind of in a triangle shape. Once I had those stamped, I pulled back in my tidy tray and my gold embossing powder, and I poured the powder over the areas that I had stamped. I did have a little bit of the powder stick to areas where I didn't want it, so I brought in a dry paintbrush and just wiped that away before I brought in my heat tool to heat set these spots. I do want to give a little shout out to my sister Lisa, who years ago gave me this Stamps by Judith Peg stamp. I never need it until I really need it. It has came in so handy. Thanks, Lisa. I continued adding gold embossed dots to the front of my cards until I had all four of those completed. And here's a look at the finished embossing. Off camera, I cut some gold foil paper into pieces that were four and a half inches wide by one inch tall. And I also got out four of my top fold card bases. And now that I have all the pieces, it's time to start putting these cards together. To ensure that my gold foil piece covers the area that I need it to because it's gonna be peeking out between the opening, I did place down the top of my card onto the card front and I brought in a pencil and lightly traced the wave. This way, when I go to put my gold foil piece on, I do know the area that it has to cover. I put adhesive on the back of the gold foil paper and you'll notice I did purposely make it a little wider just so it filled the card front left to right and I trimmed off the excess once I had that in place. After my gold strip was down, I then adhered my watercolor pieces to the front. 
I did put adhesive all around the outside of each piece and on the bigger one a little bit in the middle just because the paper was just slightly warped from the water coloring. I want to make sure that sticks down nice and tight. You'll see here that once I have both pieces in place that gold foil cardstock just peeks out a little bit from the background. I continued this same process for the remaining three cards until all are complete. And here's a finished look at all of the cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this watercolor card set. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.